Hey guys, so I got to round 100 on every Black Ops 3 Zombies map, only using classic gobblegums. And the reason I did this is because Zombies is in a bit of a weird state. You know, we don't know what the future of Zombies is going to be like, if there's even going to be a future of the Zombies mode in Call of Duty. Uh, Vanguard's the only thing to really go off, and so that's very scary, obviously. <laughs> um, so I went back to Black Ops 3, got to round 100 on all the maps. And on the surface, you know, Black Ops 3, it's... It can seem quite mysterious and confusing to someone who hasn't played Zombies before, obviously. And that's what I really like about it, because once you really delve deeper into Black Ops 3, you realize the creativity and just the passion that was put into this game is honestly brilliant. And I really enjoyed doing this, so hopefully you guys do enjoy. You bear the mark. You are cursed. You must place your hand upon the stone. This can't be happening. Okay, so the first map of Black Ops 3 is Shadows of Evil, and it's arguably one of the best maps of all time. It honestly felt great playing this map again, and immediately I began the setup where you do the four rituals and get the four gateworms, which enable you to open the pack a punch room. At round one, I was also making sure Juggernaug wasn't outside of the waterfront district, otherwise I would have restarted because I want to keep that door closed for the high round strategy. I then ran back to the start room, got the RK5 for safety, and got the fumigator that I forgot was even on this map, to be completely honest. Then, I get my first red screen at round 4. I then proceed to get my second gateworm, and on my way to my third, I pick up stamina. I pick up the third gateworm, and then I have to take the train to the waterfront district, because I'm not allowed to open that waterfront district door for the strategy. I pick up my fourth and final gateworm, and build the riot shield in the waterfront district as well, so it's nice and close. With the four gateworms, I open the pack-a-punch room, grab Widow's Wine, and then go into beast mode to unlock the sword. This map is already awesome, and the sword just makes this map so much cooler. Especially once you upgrade it, which I'll be doing later. I then place the four gateworms to begin the final ritual. Every single time I wall ran, I was absolutely petrified that I would fall off and die, because I was not used to wall running on keyboard or mouse, compared to on controller. So this is the final ritual that opens the pack-a-punch room. And to be honest, I'm just showing this all really quickly, because it's just a setup, and then we can get into the cool strategy. I then pick up the KRM, which is going to be necessary for the strategy, and I have to wall run back to the Pack-a-Punch machine, and I'm pretty sure that's the last wall run I do this entire game, because I was just so scared, as I say. If, even if you have Quick Revive and you fall down, it's game over. So I Pack-a-Punch the KRM, which gives me the Dragon's Glare, which is very powerful, and luckily here I get the Xenomatter, and also, luckily, I get Brain Rot for the KRM, and now I never have to come back to this Pack-a-Punch machine again. And also, I have two parts for the Wonder Weapon now. The final part for the Wonder Weapon spawns in these pink plants, and luckily, I get it here. The first part of the Wonder Weapon I got from killing a Magua at the start of the game, and now I can build the Apothecan Servant. And this gun honestly made me fall in love with zombies. I remember watching the relaxing end on round 115 using this weapon. And I'd played zombies before, but I'd never seen it like this. And I was like, what the hell? Straight after getting the Apothecan Servant, I was able to get the Apothecan Sword. So I had my favorite wonder weapon with my favorite specialist. This is when Shadows of Evil starts to become a lot of fun. Because at this point, it's pretty hard to die. <laughs> Even going through these zombies like that, I was never going to die. So here we finally upgrade the sword. Now, this is what I meant at the intro, where if you're a beginner and you're just playing this map for the first time, there's no way in the world that you would know you'd go through this long process to get this epic sword. After I upgrade the sword, I go back to the spawn to get quick revive. And now all I need to do is get the Luwaanis and upgrade them. It took me a while to get, but I finally got them. And now I can do the coolest Easter egg. <laughs> in the history of zombies for me so i'm just gonna show you guys So yeah, the four gateworms from the start of the game dance with the little Arnie and then you get an upgraded little Arnie and it's just like more of a pink octopus. And now we skip all the way to round 70 and this was a really confusing thing. I've never had this happen where I killed a bug and then the max ammo spawned outside of it. Because if you didn't know, there's no dog rounds in this map. There's only bug and meatball rounds. 
And so I really need this max ammo because ammo is very important on this map because you only get 10 bullets with the wonder weapon. So I went into this beast mode and I zapped the max ammo and it actually worked. So I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, leave in the comments if you did know that. Okay, so now that we're done with the setup, there's two parts to the higher round strategy. So the first part is when a Margo spawns in. So I always hit the gobble gun machine at the end of each round. And then you'll be able to hear the Margo spawn in if it does. I think it's every three to four rounds, but I could be wrong. But if you do hear it spawn in, run down and teleport to this room here. And you will always be able to get the Margo's eye before the zombies start coming in you'll be able to get one eye and then you're just gonna have to train around in this area now this was the closest call i ever had with the margua this whole game and if the margua is about to slam make sure you just do a quick 180 and have the shield on your back and that shield will save your life but other than that you just use your wonder weapon if you're in a tight corner and then just keep going around in like a 180 in a uh, like clockwise direction and just keep shooting the margua and it's pretty damn easy at round 84, I was pretty lucky and I got an alchemical antithesis and also a bug round, which pretty much just means I got three max ammos just like that. And so whenever you do run out of ammo in this position and the strategy I'm about to show you guys, just pop an alchemical antithesis and just spam it to the left there and then up the corridor and you cannot die. So that's always fun and it's a free max ammo whilst you also pretty much finish the round because the wonder weapon is so good. So now for the high round strategy. So you want to get your sword so it's fully loaded and then you want to just chuck it down and kind of just move around like I am now and the sword will just take care of all the zombies in front of you. You can see why this thing's so great. Now if you do get in a tricky situation like this and some meatballs spawn in, just make sure that when the meatball explodes it actually hits the shield and not you. Uh, just That way it just makes so you don't waste Widow's Wine which is kind of like a safety net and also you just don't take any damage as well. So just kind of turn around and let the meatball hit your shield. Um, you kind of need a little bit of good training. Sometimes the sword does just go AFK and just doesn't do anything. Uh, but once the sword runs out, then you want to just do a few loops. And I know most of you guys would know this, but this is just the strategy that I was using. It's a really fun strategy, really fast. And honestly, as long as you're conserving your ammo and always hitting the gobble gun machine, you're going to be pretty good. You can use brain rot on the KRM whenever you want, uh, but... For me, I just like to do two shots of the Wonder Weapon or one shot with the Wonder Weapon and one little Arnie and then you'll get your sword back and then you just repeat the strategy. Um, so round 99 here and I killed my final zombies and I'm on round 100. It's a great thing. I think it took five hours and I finally jumped off the wall run to end the game. Okay, so now we're on to an absolute classic, the giant. So first things first, we check what perk is under the snow. So this is a secret perk and I can see it's stamina up. I then grab the RK5 and now I camp in this first room for the first seven rounds. And so I'm just going to speed through the setup because it's very simple and it's one of the main appeals of this map. So first I hit the mystery box here and I want the Wonder Wolf or the Monkey Bombs, but of course that's very rare. So I'm happy to keep the Haymaker. I then head towards the bridge and see Juggernog is in this location, which is a good location in case I go down at a high round. I then turn on the power, open this door and then link this teleporter to the pack punch. Now I just need to link two more teleporters for the pack punch to open it i then get juggernog it's always good to buy it nice and early just to be safe i hit the mystery box my goal again is to get monkey bombs or the wonder wolf i get monkey bombs round eight which is very lucky i decided to buy speed collar at round nine i'm not sure why i did this but i did seeing that i do have monkeys now i can go ahead and do the very cool easter egg unveiling the secret perk so you need to throw these monkey bombs in each of the teleporters and then this will enable you to unlock the robot's eye, to interact with it, to <laughs> melt the snow off the secret perks. This is a very cool thing to do, and it's definitely a cool addition to such a simple map. And now that the snow is melted, I can finally grab stamina up, which is going to be very helpful for the later rounds. At this stage, I'm just trying to get the Wonder Weapon, the Wonder Wolf. And honestly, Black Ops 3 doesn't have a Wonder Weapon. That is bad, in my opinion. They're all so much fun to use, and the Wonder Wolf is no exception. Of course, the Wonder Wolf did come from World at War, and this is a World at War map remastered. So immediately after getting the Wonder Wolf, I pack a punch it, and then I grab the RK5 as my secondary. I don't use Mule Kick in my strategy, although that is very common. I then pack a punch the RK5, and then repack a punch it, because I want to get Blast Furnace on it, because there's going to be two parts to the strategy. One when you have ammo in the Wonder Wolf, and one when you don't. Before I go over the two high round strategies I used, 
I nearly actually lost the game here. It's round 49 and I don't have quick revive yet because my theory was if I go down before round 50, I'll just restart anyway to not waste time. So at round 50, I do end up getting my last perk, which is going to be quick revive. Then everything gets a bit scary as I get my first down of the entire challenge. So I get boxed up in this spot here. I definitely could have got out of it. I got a bit unlucky. There was two stranded zombies at the back there. This is where monkey bombs, of course, always come in clutch. Just chuck a few of them down and then it's very easy to get all your perks back. So whenever I had ammo with the Wonder Wolf, I always did this really fun strategy where I just sat pretty much next to the Packer Punch machine. And whenever zombies got close to me, I would just shoot the Wonder Wolf. And it doesn't kill that many zombies with each shot, but it does chain very fast. So you always feel pretty safe. As long as you don't get any blank shots, which can happen, you can just shoot the zombie and it won't do any damage. So just be careful of that. Other than that, I, I found this really fun and it really made this map pop for me. Whenever I got low on ammo, I would always use my al alchemical antithesis. I was always rotating the go gobble gum machine, making sure I was getting these regularly. Of course, I just spammed my Wonder Wolf whenever I got one of them because it's just a lot of fun doing that and you get through these rounds really quick. Now, if I had no ammo and no alchemical antithesis, I would hoard one full horde of zombies in the first room, blast furnace them, and you'll have a higher chance of getting power-ups because you've been using the Wonder Wolf, which doesn't genuinely give you power-ups. So I would make my way slowly after killing the full horde towards this trap and look towards the trap. This just means that sometimes more zombies will spawn on the other side of the trap, killing more zombies. Now, I would always use my own internal timer, just from my own memory, to figure out when I should run up the stairs. So that's something you just kind of learn from doing this strategy. But I would always go next to Juggernog and do a few loops around here, just hoard up the zombies to make sure I kill as many zombies as possible with this trap. And I would always look directly at the trap again, because the game's going to think I'm going to be running that way. And so the zombies are going to be spawning on the other side of the trap. So I'm going to get even more kills with the trap because all I have right now is Blast Furnace and it doesn't activate too often. So zombies will, of course, still be coming from the Bowie Knife direction because they're still going to be spawning that side, even though they're going to be spawning on the other side of the trap as well. And so just train them up and use your Blast Furnace and hopefully you can get a max ammo to continue the Wonder Wolf strat because it's way faster than this one. Uh, but once you think the trap's running out or is going to run out, just use the teleporter and you'll spawn back in the first room. Now, once you spawn in the first room, just face the pack punch machine. This will make it so the zombies all despawn and then spawn back into the first room, which will just make it easier for you to train. So here I get my second down and it's kind of dumb. I just kind of run into a wall. <laughs> I think if I just looked to the left a little bit, I probably would have made that. So I'm not sure what I did there. And then round 97, I get my third down and i'm not sure how that zombie if someone wants to go back and play that again that zombie just ran through the trap without dying maybe i'm dumb and it didn't actually but i was trying to kill it with my rk5 blast furnace and it just wouldn't die and of course i'm doing this strategy which means i don't have any ammo in my wonder off so i have no ammo whatsoever i have no perks and no monkey bombs i'm in a really bad situation right here so my first thought is i'm gonna run towards this teleporter here and go back to the spawn so once I get back to the first room, I face here just so the zombies despawn and just spawn in the first room for me. Which is just going to make it easy for the train. And my theory here is I just need to make it out of the first room and I'll be fine. For some reason, I didn't grab RK5 ammo there to kill the dog. And the dog very easily could have just killed me then. So I got very lucky here and the dog just despawns anyway. I finally get to round 100 and it takes about five hours, I believe. And it felt quite rewarding seeing I always failed when I was younger. Alright, so now we're on to, in my opinion, the best looking zombies map of all time, Dries and Drag. From the spawn, I make my way to the Bowie Knife. I make that my top priority off the start of the game. With the Bowie Knife, I then start the Dragon Heads. I need to turn three Dragon Heads into stone to unlock the bow. And right here, if I was playing Black Ops 2, I would have failed. I do like the three hit system with no jug i then turn on the power and then i start moving some pack a punch parts around i then grab juggernog around seven like i normally do i build the shield in the church i always build the shield really close to where i'm going to be doing my high round strategy i then turn my second dragon head into stone and then my third dragon head into stone and now i'm able to pick up the bow i remember playing this map for the first time and thinking the bow was the one weapon and being very disappointed 
But no, I start the electric bow step. So there are four bows on this map that are very powerful. And the electric bow to me is the best, especially for high rounds. At round 10, I buy double tap because of the panzers on this map are so strong. And then at round 18, I can build the Ragnarok specialist, which is absolutely brilliant specialist. And I can also get the electric bow at round 18, which is awesome. I then grab stamina up and this perk to me is a necessity along with Juggernaut every single game. At this stage, I just want good mystery box luck. I get the monkey bombs, which is awesome. I then pick up quick revive at round 24 because if I go down before then, I might as well restart anyway. I then continue to hit the box and it's already round 26 and I finally get the brekkie. So the brekkie is going to be very helpful for killing the panzer and also I'm going to put brain rot on the brekkie and that way it will help with the high round strategy. The brekkie is, in my opinion, the best shotgun, but if you guys think another shotgun's better, just let me know in the comment section because I'm not actually entirely sure, but I like the brekkie range because I can get more kills using brain rot with it. So in my opinion, Dryzendrak has one of the easiest high round strategies. So what I did was I stood up here and I didn't open the door behind me. So there's a door shut behind me and I would just shoot my electric bow on that little shield on the wall there. And the storm actually drops down and it will kill all the zombies coming up the stairs. Sometimes it can glitch out just like then and it will go under the stairs, the storm, but very rarely does it do that. And in, in that case, just use brain rot on the zombies coming up the stairs or use your Ragnarok. Um, and then pull your Ragnarok back so you can charge it again. And like you can see, I've got that safety net again. If you do run low on ammo, just spam Alchem. So of course, just spam your shots left and right like this. This is incredibly OP. And actually for the first 60 rounds I did this, I literally shot from shield to shield the whole time. And I got through these rounds ridiculously easy. Like I said, this map's the easiest. Do be careful though. Sometimes the zombies glitch out like this. These four zombies here just wouldn't die for some weird reason. So I, I, look, I shoot them with the storm. They just run straight through it. This is the first time this has ever happened. So I'm like, oh, I'm screwed here. These zombies actually won't die. I could have probably used my monkey bombs, but luckily I just jumped down and ran out and then used the trap and it killed the zombies. Now, at the end of every single round, I went to the gobble gum machine, hit it once just to rotate the gobble gums to get the alchemical antithesis a lot. Um, and then I would stand next to this doorway if it had been five to six rounds since I killed the panzer because it comes every five to six rounds. And it will always spawn in this location if you're standing there. And then all you gotta do, turn on the trap, and then he's like one one clip and then like five bullets and he's dead if you shoot him right in the center core. And that's pretty much Tree Eyes and Drac. Round 100, very easy, very fun, and very good looking map. Now, in my opinion, this map is very underrated. I love Zetsubu, and it's kind of the most fun I had on Black Ops 3 the whole time I was doing this challenge. So, first of all, what I did was I saved up 20,000 points in the first room. They only spawned from these two windows, and so I had 22,000 points by round 9. I then got the blue water, and using the blue water, I turned on this side of the power. You have to turn on two sides of power. I then picked up the HVK as well. I also grab the ICR and then grab the green water. So you need to grab blue water, charge generator A. Then with the green water, I charge generator B. Then I can finally open this mysterious looking door here. I then get the power on at round 10 and get Juggernog at round 10. Always getting Juggernog first and always getting it nice and early. All the spider webs, you have to destroy them by using grenades or by just slashing them. So I just threw a grenade and picked up double tap there. I then pack a punch the ICR, which in my opinion is one of my favorite weapons and possibly one of the strongest weapons in the game. I then build the shield at generator B. Now you might be noticing in the video by now that I always do similar things. I always buy Juggernaut early. I always build the shield near my high round strategy and I always get stamina up as you can see right here at round 16. I then pack a punch the HVK, another really strong weapon. Pretty much every weapon is good when you have all the attachments. On my way to the skull room, I water a plant with blue water. I then open the skull room, which contains the skull specialist. And also it's where I'm going to be doing my high round strategy because it's a big open area with very fast zombie spawns. I then pick up the skull and this thing is amazing. I love this thing so much. Such a cool specialist, definitely like one of the strongest in the game. And it's up there with the sword from, in, in my opinion. I then do this challenge, which gives me an extra perk slot. I then pick up the Vespa, pack a punch the Vespa, and 
Usually people use Mule Kick for the strategy, but I just like to use the Vespa and the ICR. So I get Deadwire on the ICR, and then I like to have Turned on the Vespa. But obviously it's RNG what you get, so I just have to stick with Deadwire for now. After watering this plant with blue, green, and purple water, it gives me a free random perk with that perk slot I consumed from the challenge. I would have preferred Electric Cherry, but Widow's Wine is definitely better than if I got Mule Kick. I finally get turned on the Vespa, and now I'm all set up. I don't need Monkey Bombs because I am using Anywhere But Here and In Plain Sight as my classic Gobblegums as my Get Out of Jail free card. Um, and then straight away, when you're set up, just come to this skull room. This is what I did. Use your skull whenever you have it. This thing is insane. And I swear it kills the zombies under the map or it just does this really weird thing where it makes the rounds go faster. I don't know, man, because there was a few times no zombies were spawning in for like 20 seconds when I was using the skull and the rounds were going really quick. So whenever you do run out of skull ammo, whatever it is called, just do like this little semicircle here and stick really close to the walls and make sure you kill the spiders whenever you can. If you do get stuck, just use your anywhere but here. Just use your in-plane sight and just really stick to these walls. Um, it, it is kind of like a bit of a weird thing and it takes a little bit to get used to. Just like all these strategies, it takes a little bit to get used to. But honestly, this was the most fun I had playing Black Ops 3. I really love this strategy. It's actually a blast to play. And here's a little bit of a clutch that I did. So... It's going to be very hard to explain to someone who's never done the strategy, but basically the zombies have certain spawns in this room, of course. And right here, I do not know how I survived that. That was kind of mad. You have to do like a weird cutback. I don't know. Something about this map, it's, it's somewhat challenging because you actually have to train. You don't just spam a wonder weapon. And then the skull is incredibly satisfying to use. That's how you kill the bosses if they spawn in this room. Just use the skull and it'll just explode the boss very quickly. There's just something about this map. I love the aesthetic of it and just like the sounds it makes. That sounds a bit lame, I know. <laughs> but it's honestly it's a really good map. And this is when I needed ammo. I would always do this run. So if you do want to do the strategy, just follow the exact run. And this is why I'm using the Vesper and the ICR as well. Both really good guns though. Uh, especially for the little spiders. And this is the worst case scenario. The spider blocks off that section there. It's not really a problem. Just cut back and then run the same direction. Back. To the skull room now this is my first down and my only down i really messed up man i got a bit complacent you know it takes like five to six hours to get to round 100 most of the time on black ops 3 of course this does depend on the map but zetsubu took about five hours so i got a little bit lazy there i really shouldn't have gone down i would have been a lot more happy with a flawless run and also if you do go down especially without monkey bombs you're gonna be very careful to get your perks back that's why i'm showing myself getting them back because it's honestly terrifying, especially when you have a boss spawning under me just like then. And then this double tap. I, I risked my life so much for this double tap. Uh, I know a lot of people complain about the spiders just webbing everything. So it is a bit scary, but it does make for fun clutches if you, if you do manage to clutch just like this. I don't know how I got out of that either. And so yeah, that's Zetsubo. I'm sorry if I pronounce it Zetsubo a few times in this commentary. But honestly, I don't know why people hate on this map. I love it. It is a bit tedious, but I didn't even get the Wonder Weapon, so it wasn't tedious for me, and I had I still had an absolute blast playing it. Also, to end the game, I just did some stupid... I was just trying to experiment with training on this game. Didn't work, so that's why it says two downs. Okay, so now I'm onto the hardest map on Black Ops 3, whilst also being the easiest map on Black Ops 3. Some of the hard things I found on this map is the fact that the one weapon gets weak past round 50. I didn't use the specialist dragon because it crashes your game a lot. The manglers are very strong, the valkyries are very strong, and there's not many good spots to train, and it also takes about 7 hours to get to round 100. The reason why this map is simultaneously the easiest map in Black Ops 3 Zombies is because you can have unlimited lives, and this is a strategy I did. So if you do the Easter egg in an hour and 15 minutes, you get perma perkaholic, which means you get every single perk in the game. And if you go down, you keep all your perks bar quick revive. So if I went down with perma perkaholic, I would lose quick revive. But all you have to do is go to the wonder fizz machine and hit the wonder fizz machine. Now, because quick revive is the only perk that's going to be in the wonder fizz machine, you immediately get it back. And the only reason you won't is if the wonder fizz machine moves. And then you just go to it and hit it again. But even if you do do the Easter egg in under an hour and 15 minutes and you get unlimited lives, this map is still hard because of the glitches. 
I had one glitch where I used it on anywhere but here after doing the easter egg and it took me back to the boss fight and I couldn't get back out so I had to end the game. Another bug I got was directly after doing the easter egg I hopped in a dragon and the loading bar wouldn't go away from my screen so I had to restart then as well so I just wasted so much time and honestly Gorod Krovi took a while to do. Now that I've kind of explained a brief summary of what Gorod Krovi is like to get to round 100, I'm just going to go over the setup quickly here. So I've put those parts in there which enable me to ride a dragon. Yes, I ride a dragon. This map's so epic. That's what I mean. This map is definitely on par with some of the greats, but at the same time it just has some issues like I said before. So after riding the dragon to this location, I go to the bottom floor and shoot this egg, the dragon egg, which is a very cool thing as well. You then jump in the sewer and shoot this little red light and it will switch to a green light. That means you can get a part later and the sewer takes you back to the main part of the map. Then you wait for a dragon. So I'm going to place this egg in the nest here and I'm going to get the, the dragon to blow fire on the egg. Seriously, just like playing this map, I did this map last when I got to round 100 on it. And it really, you know, I was really enjoying Black Ops 3 and I thought it was great. But there's something about this map that's that's just different, you know. It's It's got some really epic qualities to it, almost like a movie. So I wait around, then pick up the egg again. I then begin to charge the egg by killing zombies that are on fire. I then ride the dragon to the Pack-a-Punch room. And at the Pack-a-Punch room, I initiate the lockdown, which then I have to survive four rounds of zombies. I then use the MG42 Tyrant, which furthermore charges my egg. This turret's really strong and pretty sick, but I do manage to get my first red screen at round 10. So I do get a lot of red screens at really early rounds. If this was Black Ops 2, I would probably be dead. I then charge the egg fully by shooting the shield. Now this shield is the best in zombies history and is very vital to this map. After I complete the wave of zombies, I pack a punch the wonder weapon. And this wonder weapon's very strong, especially for the Easter egg, it's very helpful. But in high rounds, it does drop off. And it's probably one of the worst wonder weapons on Black Ops 3. I then pick up the Dragon Strike, my reward for doing the wave of zombies. And then I put the egg in the incubator because it's fully leveled up. I then crack a code and it's kind of confusing and grab this purple part. That step's kind of confusing to me. I just use a website to crack the code. But once you put the part inside of Sophia, that sounds kind of weird. You, she then gives you a passcode and you have to type up Cronus, and this will then unlock the next stage. I then shoot my right shield next to double tap, which gives me a trophy for the Easter egg. I then pick up double tap and then pick up the trophy. I hit the gobble gum machine and get in plain sight. Now this gobble gum makes the boss fight incredibly hard to very easy. Again, this map is just <laughs> weird like that. I then pick up the incubated egg and go down the sewer to the spawn room. Whilst in the spawn room, I can then get the Gauntlet of Siegfried. This thing's very strong, but I don't use it in the high rounds because it makes your game crash. I pick up Jug at round 12, only because I am doing the Easter Egg and I'm trying to speedrun it. I then get my last trophy through using the Dragon of Siegfried and then place it. And now I'm onto the trophy stage. Now, if you've never done this Easter Egg, you have to do these six challenges to please Sophia so she'll give you a part to complete the Easter Egg. So the first challenge I had to do, and it's in random order, I had to bring a green mangler, the mangler's eye is green, over to this magnet here, and the magnet will suck up the mangler, and then you'll do the first challenge. The second challenge I got was the bomb challenge. With this challenge, all you have to do is simply defuse six bombs in a certain order. I failed the challenge <laughs> before because I forgot the order. So all you have to do is just write down the order in which the bombs are defused. If you do the wrong bomb, it will explode on you. Now the third step I got was the Valkyrie Escort step, where I had to escort this broken, wounded Valkyrie all the way from the spawn room to the Magnet, where I put the Mangler. This step's pretty easy as long as you have the Wonder Weapon and pack a punch it because its left sh weapon shoots out a portal which just slows down the zombies, which just makes it very easy. If you do kill the Valkyrie, you do fail the challenge. Now for this fourth challenge, I need to deliver a part to Sophia. So I end up grabbing the M8 off the wall here because it has a little extra range. I then go over to this dragon center and I have to kill about 30 zombies before these zombies destroy this little, I don't even know what it's called, this little pod. 
I then ran out of ammo with the M8 and have to use my wonder weapon, but it's all good. This thing's very powerful, so either way. Once the pod explodes after defending it, I then put my dragon out and this will grab a part for me. This is another cool step that kind of makes this map feel more of a movie at times. Onto the fifth challenge, it is the Gersh challenge where I have to shoot this little yellow circle thing. It's a really weird challenge, but as long as you have the Wonder Weapon pack punch, it's very easy. It is actually very hard if you don't, so you really have to make sure. That's why I sacrificed Jug nice and early here. I did mess up here because I, I sprayed too early. I actually shot the Gersh too, too fast, which made the dialogue go way longer than I expected. But yeah, if you don't have the Pack-a-Punch Wonder Weapon, this step is an absolute pain. But just shoot the Gersh three times um, after it's done speaking and you'll be done. I pick up Stamina up at round 15. So these are my four perks that I'm taking into the boss fight. Not too sure why I did get Quick Revive. And as you can see here, the Gersh finally goes and the Magnet sucks it up. So that's the fifth challenge complete. So now onto the last challenge, which is always the same challenge where you just have to do a download. It's very weird. Very easy, just leave one mangler and then run in a circle. It's the easiest challenge there is. And then you just pick up this card and go to the spawn room. And this will satisfy Sophia, I think, or something. I don't know. This lets you go into the boss fight. I wasn't quite sure on the storyline. I then go under Sophia. Again, sounds kind of weird. And it takes me to the boss fight. So I, I'm going through the sewer, but it's not going to take me back to the spawn room. It's going to take me to the boss fight, which is really sick. This is what I was talking about when I got stuck in here after the boss fight. One time I completed the boss fight, did it anywhere but here, and it put me here, and I couldn't get back out, and it was an absolute pain. So now you've got to defeat the dragon. Um, the Ni Nikolai is actually on your side for the start of the fight, and so you're just going to... Nikolai will wound the dragon, and you're just going to have to finish the dragon off. Again, <laughs> I'm making things sound weird. So that's... You're just going to shoot the dragon three... Weak spots, and then he's dead. So dragon's very easy to call. Again, very cinematic though. You literally verse a dragon. And now Nikolai turns on you and you have to kill him. And this is where the in-plane sight, of course, comes in clutch. You pop it and you have to shoot the, the yellow lights on his chest. The two yellow lights on his chest. And then the top right and the top left and then his cock. And then he dies. So, yeah. After completing the boss fight, you will then spawn back in the spawn room. And the game will be completely silent. It's really weird. And then you'll finally get all of your perks and all the perks in the game. So that's absolutely awesome. Here I pick up the Mangler Mask, which just means I do more damage to Manglers and also take less damage to Manglers. So at this stage in the game, I'm pretty set up. So I'm just going to skip to round 66 now. Worst case comes to worst case. I do have to use my specialist like this moment here. Other than that, I won't ever use it because it just crashes your game way too often i'm pretty sure it is very strong though i, I haven't really used it that much because it just does crash your game so majority of the strategy was actually using this dragon shield this thing is amazing and it will forever one shot the zombies so the trap there i would also activate i would use fireworks in the ma and brain rot on the vespa and then my third weapon was the wonder weapon now the wonder weapon was good for killing manglers valkyries and it also just slowed down the zombies as you can see there but that's how easy it is to go down on Gorod Krovi. Just keep that in your mind. I went down pretty much like one hit of a zombie and then a mangler shot. So if you go down, you keep all your perks except quick revive. So just hit the Wonder Fist machine here. I get very unfortunate there and I get a monkey, which means the Wonder Fist machine is going to move to another location. Just hit it again and then you have unlimited quick revives, which is amazing for this map. As long as you just don't go down whilst going to the Wonder Fizz machine, like I am in this tricky situation here, you're always going to be good. And it's a, it's it, in that sense, it's a hard map because you guys saw how I just went down, but it's also an easy map because you guys saw how I just got back up. So it, it's a weird map in a lot of ways. Um, so I would always initiate the trap whenever it was able to be initiated. I would use Brain Rot and then Fireworks, both amazing. And then I'd usually whip out my shield, and the thing about the shield is it's quite complicated on this map, and it took me a while to really learn how to use it properly. I get a lot of downs in this game because I just didn't know what I was doing with the shield because it's it's really the main thing that kills the zombies because it takes like 7 hours to get to round 100. And without the shield, it would take so much longer as well. So the reason you camp in this position here is because one, you have the trap to your right, and two, the shield spawns right behind you. 
So what you want to do is you want to shoot down the wonder weapon and the slowing effect will always work on this map, I think up until about round 160. So the wonder weapon will, will do really well at slowing all the zombies coming to you so you just have a bit more time. You can use your fireworks on the slow zombies, you can use your turn on the slow zombies. What you really want to do is hit the slow zombies and this will break your shield so you can buy a new one and now you have three fresh shots in your shield. So you want to be shooting your shield and by the time you have zero bullets in your shield you want to make sure that your shield breaks and then you can get a new one. One of the bonuses of using the right shield is you don't have to use alchemical antithesis so you can use in plain sight or anywhere but well don't use anywhere but here actually because it will take you to <laughs> the boss fight and then you won't be able to get back out. So just use in plain sight which is going to be very good because you can't really go down if you do use Widow's Wine unless you run out of Widow's Wine or, like you saw before, the Mangler do that ridiculous thing where they, they do so much damage in this map, man. Honestly. So yeah, that's pretty much the high round strategy for Gorod Krovi. Like I said, this map is weird. <laughs> it's quite a complicated map and you just got to get used to it. So here's some more footage of me just doing a nice little clutch up here. And you can see that I am breaking my shield because I have no shots in my shield left. So I'm trying to break it, and everything's going a bit haywire here. I'm getting pushed all the way to the back. I use my wonder weapon, but then I have to reload it. So it gets a bit scary, but luckily you can see the riot shield's just very good. And that's why I said it's the best riot shield in Zombies history. And here, I finally get to round 100. It took about 7 hours. Um, and I think I did the Easter egg in 50 minutes. It will say here in a second. So I did the Easter egg in 49 minutes, and the game went for 6.5 hours. Alright, so now we're on to Revelations, the easiest map in Black Ops 3 by far. This map is way too easy, but it is a very epic map. It's the type of map where I think you should introduce someone to playing zombies. For example, my dad's not very good at video games, but I think he would still enjoy this map. So first of all, I grab the Vespa at round 2, and then I grab Juggernaut at round 4 very, very early. Very easy to get Juggernaut on this map. I then grab the VMP to kill the bugs because I ran out of ammo on my Vespa. I then do the second ritual, so you need to do four rituals to open the pack punch. I then run past a perk, and I'm like, wait, that's Widow's Wine. I honestly never knew Widow's Wine was even on this map. I then do the third ritual, and then the fourth ritual, and now I can get the pack punch open. And I didn't, I actually forgot about this. You have to catch this monster to open the pack punch. And this is the coolest pack punch room of all. You're inside a monster's stomach. And I think you shoot, I don't know if the pack punch is in the heart, but you shoot the pack punch out of this heart or it's like the stomach or something. And the pack punch machine drops down and you can finally pack punch your weapon. So I pack punch the Vespa and the pack punch camo on this game, um, on this map is my favorite on Black Ops 3. It's very nice, especially with the Wonder Weapons, and you'll see that in a second here. So I repack a puncher, and I get Brain Rot, or Turned. I then grab Stamina up at round 13, and then I grab Double Tap. So you can notice my four perks, I don't have Quick Revive. So I'm trying to do this flawless. I then get little Arnie's at round 14 as well. So I have very powerful stuff already, and round 16, I get the Thunder Gun. I'm already more powerful than I would ever be if I was playing the Giant, for example. Then I get the Apothic and Servant on top of that. This map's crazy at round 19. <laughs> I'm so overpowered. I've got literally everything I could possibly want in zombies. I then begin to start to upgrade the Apothic and Servant. Yes, you can upgrade on this map, as most of you guys would know. It's bloody OP. So you shoot these little square things in the sky. Whoever found out that if you shoot these square things, you can upgrade the Apothic and Servant. That's pretty, pretty insane. But you have to actually make sure you do hit them. And here I shoot the last square thing out of the sky, and then a panzer spawns in. And remember here, I don't have quick revive, so I'm going to be actually quite careful, because the panzer's very strong, and I haven't pack a punch my thunder gun yet. So, you might be... Th oh, I was thinking, I'm safe here. Boom. I'm one hit away from my game being completely over after getting all of the good stuff nice and early. But here, I go back to the pack a punch room or pack a punch stomach i guess you can say and i pack a punch the apothic and servant and this thing looks just look at that that just looks ridiculously good it, it just looks way too good it's just such a satisfying weapon and uh it's too overpowered though it literally ruins this map completely because it makes this map way too unbalanced 
And when a map's too easy in zombies, you just don't really want to play it again, per se. It's just, if it's just too easy. So at the end of every round, of course, I hit the gobble gum machine because I want alchemical antithesis. Um, but if you're unlucky, sometimes a panzer will spawn if you have really bad timing when you hit your gobble gums. And uh, this is an example of that where I have to accidentally run down the stairs and then I'm kind of in a bad situation. I'm still pretty confident here. I'm pretty sure it's two shot to the to the stomach with the the thunder gun upgraded, but boom, yeah, red screen again. It's it's pretty scary get a, getting a red screen when you don't have quick revive, because that could have been game over. And that's twice now by the pansies that's happened. Now the high round I use is actually very very easy, and I'm not too sure why I've put down a little Arnie here and doing what I'm doing right now because it's literally nearly made me die. I think I did this challenge three weeks ago where I got to round 100 on this map, so. I can't quite remember what the hell I was doing there, but I definitely could have easily failed. Now, this is what I did for 99% of the time. It's so easy. It's so brain dead. Literally, my dad could do it. Oh, you have... Okay, that's not an insult, but I'm just talking in terms of gaming. So, what I did for this high round strategy is whenever the black hole disappeared, I just shot the wonder weapon again <laughs> in this location. <laughs> it's just so stupidly overpowered. And way too easy. Now, the only thing you really have to do is at the end of each round, just go and hit the gobble gun machine nice and early. That way you won't get trapped by the panzer like I did earlier. Just hit the gobble gun machine. Keep rotating it after every single round just to make sure you're getting those alchemical antithesis very often. And this is also another thing you have to really focus on. Because you ran that way, the zombies will run, uh, spawn behind you. So just throw one little Arnie. And now that you're standing next to this trap, no zombies will spawn behind you, and there'll be no gatekeeper spawning. So the zombies will only spawn right in front of you. It, it's honestly just broken, and so whenever you do get low on ammo, just pop an alchemical antithesis. And I like to aim for the, the corners through these windows by laying down. It just looks very satisfying. But yeah, this, <laughs> this map is... It's, it's very busted. This reminds me of some black, some Cold War stuff. But this is even easier than Cold War. Like, this is this is stupid. But, I mean, it is still incredibly satisfying. But I will admit, the whole time I played this game, I literally had my phone next to me playing music. I had my headset off. And I was literally just listening to, like, Michael Jackson or something. I don't know. I was listening to some random... Art. Michael Jackson's awesome, but just some random artist. And, yeah, so here I get to round 99. And this whole game, I had no audio whatsoever. And it was just that easy. It's kind of stupid. Maybe I'll do a thing where I'll get my, my dad to get to round 100 on here. So I got 3 hours and 17 minutes to get to round 100. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the video.